Okay. Okay. Do you want me to get him like, like that? No. Whoa, now. What's going on, y'all? Today we're going to try to catch a big old snapping turtle. Now we're going to set up in two different locations. In this first location, I'm going to throw my jugs and see if we can catch one on a jug. And then we're going to go to another location and set out a trot line and see if we can catch one that way. And hopefully, with all these different methods, we can come away with a big snapping turtle. I'm hoping to cook a turtle gumbo. It's going to be awesome. <sighs> All right, for bait, we're gonna use good old fashioned Piggly Wiggly chicken livers. They seem to work pretty good when it comes to catching snapping turtles. Use, we're gonna use the tougher parts so they stay on the hook better. All right, we got our jug set. Now we're gonna get our trot line set on a new location. That's the end. That's the end. That looks like that might work. <laughs> All right, we gave it a few hours. Uh, checked the jugs first, didn't have anything on the jugs, but we're over here at the trot line and uh, we see one floating. Let's see what we got. I feel the weight. He's pulling back against me. Now nah, he's coming to me. He's fine. See them bubbles coming? Oh. He's getting close. He's pulling against me. Big old boy. Don't let him pull. Don't let him pull. Got him. There he is. I didn't mind mine. I got mine. There's that big old thing right there. No problem. I don't think he's going to crawl. He can't get his claws up. Well, as long as he ain't near the water, we get away from the water, he don't really stand a chance. He's, he's loose. And he's loose. All right, it's the next day. Now, after we had that little debacle of the turtle jumping out of the buggy, I uh, brought the turtle home, got it processed. I'm not gonna show that in this video due to it being extremely graphic. But I'm gonna answer a question that I know I'm gonna get, and that question is why I get it in my comments all the time. Why eat a snapping turtle first? Uh, snapping turtles are a nuisance in a pond, and second, they're delicious. Um, here in Alabama, they're regulated. Now, that was a common snapping turtle. It's not a protected species like the alligator snapping turtle, but they are regulated and do have size limits. <clears throat> now, I soaked this meat in salt water overnight in the refrigerator, but I want you to look closely at the meat. I've got the front legs, the back straps, or the tenderloins, and then the back legs. Um, a lot of people say that turtles have seven different types of meat. Now I don't know about seven, but it does definitely have white and dark meat. And the meat does have different textures. Um, something that's unique is these two back straps. They look like 
chicken tenders that you could buy in the grocery store while the front and back legs resemble more like rabbit meat. Alright, we're going to make a gumbo with this turtle. And I'm going to cook the turtle meat in the Instapot for about an hour. Now, I've already put the turtle meat in, and I'm going to add 64 ounces of chicken broth. Before we turn the Instapot on, I'm going to add a little bit of Zatarain's Shrimp and Crab Bowl. This is a 4 ounce bottle, but I'm only going to add about an ounce, kind of give our broth a seafood taste. It also adds a little bit of spice, maybe just a tad more. Alright, there we go. Not too much. Alright, our turtle's done, so we're going to start making our roux for our gumbo. First thing we're going to do, we've got our sm sliced smoked sausage. We're going to brown it in the pan. If you hear anything in the background, people talking, I got my family here. Hopefully they'll try some turtle gumbo with me. Alright, our sausage is brown. We're gonna take it back and take it back out and put it on the plate. Now you can see that it's brown the bottom of the pan. It's still got some of the grease in there. That's gonna give us a good flavor to our gumbo. Now I've lowered the heat down and I'm gonna build it back up. But I'm going to add another fourth cup of vegetable oil. And I'll add a fourth of a cup of flour. Now the most important part of building this root is we're going to start stirring. Got to stir. We're going to stir this root until it turns to a chocolate color. Alright, our roux is the right color. Real dark. I'm actually going to take it off the heat. I don't know this oven. I'm going to cut it down low a little bit. Try not to burn it. Trinity, got a cup of onion, diced onion, a cup of diced bell peppers, and a cup of diced celery. And we're going to mix this in till our onions become translucent. Our onions are where we want them, so we're going to add back our sausage. Mix those in. Then we're going to add a cup of okra. You can't have gumbo without okra. Mix that in. This also helps get a lot of the slime off the okra. Okra can be a little slimy. You see it coming out in there. I think you just got to take your time with this. You can't get in a hurry. Alright. Now we're ready for our broth. Alright, we're going to add our turtle broth to our gumbo. Do a little bit at a time until we get the consistency that we want. I'm going to add our picked turtle meat. Well, since it's cooled, it looks a lot like pork. But, I promise you, it's that turtle I showed you. all of it. See, now this is going to thicken it up quite a bit. We're going to have to add more of our broth. And that might be a little too much turtle meat, but you know, it's a turtle gumbo. We want to taste the turtle. Yep, got to add more broth.
and we're going to save that last remaining broth, last of the remaining broth, just in case after I bring this to a boil it picks up. All right, we're going to add a tablespoon of ground black pepper. We're going to add a tablespoon of cayenne pepper. I'm going to add two teaspoons of ground oregano and we're going to do two teaspoons of paprika. Now I'm going to salt the taste later. Well, if I get into the actual salt. Alright, I'm going to salt the taste later but I am going to add a little bit right now. And then finally, I'm going to put two tablespoons, well, i tell you what, we'll go four tablespoons of the best hot sauce out there, Crystal. Let's give this a mix. Make sure everything's good and mixed in. Let's go and give it a taste test. You gotta, you gotta taste your food when you're cooking. A little spicy. All the flavors are good, but it's gonna need some more salt later. All right, let's bring this up to a bowl. We're going to let it boil for about five minutes, then we'll cut it back down and set it at a simmer.